saying um, that you didn't feel that it was so important that you had worked with spray paint and that made me feel curious to ask you what do you feel is important about like this piece and in your work? Well, you know, I think what, in my case, uh, when I uh, discovered uh, self-taught art, folk yeah. art uh, there was a book uh, by Sidney Janis called They Taught Themselves. Uh -huh. And when I saw that, I suddenly realized that these people had no training in, in the use of paints, no training in perspective and anatomy and all those things. Yeah. And Rousseau especially became such a great artist that even Picasso would buy Rousseau paintings. Yeah. And, and they were uh, right up there with, with the best paintings in the world. And I, I it suddenly I realized that being somebody like a pho photorealist artist, that's just a technique that almost anybody could learn. Yeah. And so uh, the knowing, seeing uh, self-taught art was a big, big change for me in understanding. When, when I went to art school, uh, I assumed that Norman Rockwell was the best American yeah. artist. Yeah. And when I got to art school, nobody at the art school ever heard of Norman Rockwell. Yeah, and so that was in like the late 30s? Well, that was in the 30s. And, and so it took me a long time to, to realize that Norman Rockwell he was a good artist, yeah. but there were other artists, all kinds of artists, yeah. you know? and especially the uh, self-taught artists. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was a, a big, a, a big uh, change in my whole attitude about yeah. art. Uh, I just, just couldn't understand why people would like. Uh, but I, mean, I think it is true that a lot of the things that you were experimenting with can now be done on computer. Yeah, but yeah. one of the things that amazes me, you know, through my life of watching you endlessly experiment yeah. with visual images, yeah. is that everything that you did, along with your interest in the experiment, but they all have your personality, your compositions, your color, the photographs go with the paintings, the paintings go with the photographs, and it's all like this flowing river of creativity that, um, and it's different from how things look that are made on computer. It, it has that personal yeah. touch. Well, I, I always, uh, one of the things I suppose that influenced the uh, direction of my work was that I, I didn't make a living with my art alone. Yeah, you had that freedom uh, to do whatever you pleased. A, yeah. I always had a full-time job, right. e either in uh, advertising or book design. Yeah. And so, uh, I, you know, I, I could do whatever I wanted in my paintings. Yeah. If, if it started to go off in one direction, I mm -hmm. would either follow or, or forget it. Yeah. Uh, so, that, you know, there wasn't that thing where, where, where the a gallery would want you to stay in the yeah, same Yeah, I think that was very important. And so that, that had a big effect on mm -hmm. the work. Yeah. The other thing was that I, I always worked fast, and, and I, I think that was partly because in advertising and book design and all that, you had, had to work yeah. fast oh, because there was always sort of a deadline. Yeah. And, uh, and I and I never had that urge to make uh, photorealism. No. Or no. where a lot of people did. Yeah. At least briefly. So, uh, so yeah, I was, uh, I was, uh, if I would got my, if my work went in one direction, I could follow it, or I could drop it. Yeah. And start in a different direction. And so that, I think that was. Uh, largely because I, I wasn't with a gallery. I think so. I think that's really true. But I also saw, though, even with your book design work, which won a lot of prizes, you know, in design, yeah. that there, too, it related. Sometimes the book design 
inspired things in painting, yep. and sometimes things in your painting inspired things in your book design, which yep. was interesting too. But as you say, with the book design, there were a lot of limitations, and with the painting, you were totally free. That's right. That was nice. I actually won more awards in, uh, in book design than in yeah. painting. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was partly because the, my boss, who was the editor of uh, literature, high school literature, Scott Forsman did not want his books to look like the readers. Yeah. In the readers, the artwork was incidental and just helpful to the yeah. text. Just he, people, wanted, yeah. he wanted the art that we used to look like art. School, yeah. self-taught artists, and and the modern art, and that you never really liked any kind of art that was like pretentious or overworked or frilly. You always were going back to keeping it just very simple. Mm. Yeah, I, that was still another th another factor was uh, I, I was always doubtful about art in, in school, high yeah. school, about why it was art and yeah. this painting was art and this painting wasn't art. Yeah. Until I came across folk art. Yeah. And I think folk art showed me that art didn't have to be you know, photographic, or yeah. realistic, or this mm -hmm. or that, it could be anything. And it was just kind of the impulse that these self-taught painters brought to art, which made me see that art was, uh, was, was not a question of good technique or good drawing or anyth anything. Yeah. It, was, it could be anything that, yeah. that uh, you did. Yeah. And, and, and so that, that was a big factor. Mm -hmm. For me, and that I remember um, Mom saying to me because she loved your work so much and always believed in it, and she and I would talk about it. I was always interested in it growing up, and she said she felt that the reason your work was always growing and was always fresh and unique was that you always returned to nature, and that nature is infinite. And whereas even though your art might at times be in homage to art, but your colors and your compositions and your inspiration would always come from your love of nature and your returning to nature, which was also something a lot of the self-taught artists had. Yeah, that was probably another thing when I was quite young. <clears throat> My my ambition was to be a trapper. Yeah. <laughs> to go up north you know, and trap the little beasts. Yeah. And then come back for a, a few months or whatever yeah. to get the money and then go back to nature. And that was because I read hunting and fishing magazines. Yes. And so